how to make professional looking dungeon walls that don't obstruct your player's line of sight. Today on Dungeon Craft. If you enjoy this content, subscribe and hit the bell icon for future updates. Thank you. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master here at Dungeon University wearing my plus one tweed jacket of insight. And today we're going to be talking about terrain walls. A few weeks ago, I unleashed UDT, Ultimate Dungeon Terrain Upon the World. UDT is made from formula insulation and mounted on a Lazy Susan. The concept is simple. You place the key, furniture, monsters, character miniatures in the center of the terrain. That way, all the players can spin the terrain toward them and move their own figure into the desired position. I didn't include walls because walls get in the way of players' line of sight blocking the action. Also, most of the time, players just surround the monster and beat it to death in the center of the room, making walls less than necessary. Other terrain like archways, doors, bookshelves, and crates can be used to indicate where the walls would be, and the players' imaginations can do the rest. With UDT, you can make a dragon's lair, wizard's laboratory, tavern, or torture chamber within moments. But some of you said you wanted walls so you could fight in hallways, etc., and I'm a dungeon master who listens to their audience. So I'm going to show you how to make walls the dungeon craft way. Fast, with no money. Here is a piece of leftover styrofoam fiberglass insulation that I had from creating the original Ultimate Dungeon Terrain. And I got this at Home Depot. It's an inch thick and you can see the edges are really flat. We want to use these edges as the bottom of our walls because they're going to be totally flat and level. I'm going to measure out one centimeter from the edge a few of our viewers from the UK stated a preference for centimeters, so I'm going to do that with this video. It's one centimeter in width. I have this pre-bought piece of ceramic wall terrain. This is originally for a, a low field wall for wargaming. I don't remember where I got it. I think it was at Gen Con, so I'm going to use the pattern as an inspiration for my wall. I draw a faint line directly in the center of the wall running its length and this is just for perspective. I'm going to have my field stones be about four levels deep roughly. So I know that I'm going to put about two levels on either side of that, that line. And the key to making these field stones look real is to round the edges. Take your time, round the edges use a ballpoint pen with a very thick ballpoint and also stagger those mortar lines you don't want your mortar lines lining up this is the most time consuming part of the build green stuff world makes these rollers where you could just roll over the foam and black magic craft demonstrates how to do that i have those rollers and i find that the the indentations the mortar lines aren't deep enough as i would like so it does take longer to to draw it out but I think you get a better result and especially considering we're not making that many walls notice on the top and the sides I'm going to continue the mortar line around the edge these are supposed to be stones laid on top of each other so they're going to wrap around if you're wondering how long this process takes it took me about 90 minutes to make six wall pieces but you can always pass the time by listening to music putting on a ball game or binge watching dungeon craft we have over 70 videos covering tons of topics from painting to DM advice. These scenes are from our recent campaign update episode, The Bandit Lair. Every month I show you how to plan out encounters and illustrate my concepts with these cool miniatures. So yeah, check it out. And when you're done, you can stamp your walls with some aluminum foil to give it stony texture. Then hit that with some Mod Podge. I am mixing up this Mod Podge, which is really watered down glue with some black craft paint. I'm not gonna use the good paint on this. Craft paint will do, that's a 50 cent bottle. And I mix it up and I'm gonna cover this, this wall piece, making like the Rolling Stones and painting it black. If you don't have Mod Podge, you could just use white glue and add a couple capfuls of water and you'll probably be able to achieve the same effect. So I definitely wanna cover everything, especially getting into all those mortar lines so that we have total coverage. And then I do the same for the rest of my pieces. And while I'm thinking about it, I generally don't make wall pieces larger than 6 inches, 16 centimeters, because at greater lengths the walls can get warped because of the dampness of the glue and the paint. Also, medium-sized walls are much easier to store. 
One problem you might run into is that you damage the styrofoam and you end up with some kind of chunk falling away. So what I do is I take some green stuff from Green Stuff World. This is Green Stuff Tape. You mix the blue and the light green sides together, pull off a chunk, make it into a little ball, and use it to fill the hole. There we go. It's a perfect little stone. This will cure in about 10 minutes. It'll be really hard, and I'm not even going to, to prime it. I'm just going to paint over it with the next layer, which is going to be Craft Smart 10. It's important that you don't get gray paint. Tan looks a lot better. Here I'm shaking it up and I'm going to be adding a little water to this paint. Enough that it's not a wash, it's, it'll get the color on, but thin enough that it's not going to obscure the detail. Remember we've already added the Mod Podge, which is a layer of glue, so we want to be careful about not obscuring any of the, the mortar lines in the detail. So I water that paint a little bit. It also dries faster when it's thinner. Here it is close up and you can see that detail and we want to preserve it. So give it an even coat and try to get in those mortar lines, but it's not really necessary. If there's a little bit black, that's going to be okay. Next, I dry brush it with Craft Smart Suede, which is lightening up that tan on the color palette. That's our next step. So notice I wipe off the excess on a paper towel and I lightly brush it over the surface. And what's going to happen is the elevated areas of the wall will, will pick up that suede color. And now you're going to end up with some color variation where there's really two different colors of tan on that wall. This will add variety and depth to the piece, making it look more like real stone. The next step is giving it a wash. One of my viewers asked how I make the wash, and I'm honest, I always tell everybody I took the formula from Black Magic Craft. I keep this bottle of wash on my desk. It's mostly made of, of old paint from my models where I have this pickle jar on my desk and I, I clean the brushes in it. And I take that, that paint, which is kind of grayish, and I add Black Craft paint to it. I mix it up. I add a little bit of dish soap, which I didn't show you here, just the tiniest drop. I add a bit of brown and green. Here I'm adding more paint water, and I mix it up really well. It really is super thin, and it's important to wait until the walls are bone dry before you attempt to do this. And I cover the entire piece, and what's going to happen is the paint will flow into the mortar lines and look black, and it'll just tint the surface gray. To check to see if I have the right consistency, you'll see to the right of your screen in different shots, I have a paper towel, and I'll wipe the brush off on the paper towel, and if, it's, if it looks blackish, I know it's probably done. When these dry, I didn't think they were dark enough, so I just did it again. It's a trial and error thing, and it's why I don't use homemade washes on my miniatures. If you paint miniatures, use Citadel or high quality washes. It's absolutely critical that you let the pieces dry till they are bone dry, preferably overnight. The reason is our next step is giving it a highlight, which means giving it another dry brush. And if there's any dampness with that wash in those, those mortar lines, it'll come out and you'll start blending the paint. And you don't want that. You want to be adding a highlight. So it's important that your brush is dry and the surface is dry. And we're just going to take that tan paint, wipe it off on our paper towel, and give it a light brushing check it out up close, you can see the detail immediately pop out and it really looks like real stone. I set them aside for 15 minutes to dry. You don't need a lot of time. You can see close up. Again, they look great. Our next step is we're going to coat it with Elmer's Clear Glue. And for this I'm going to use a synthetic brush. It's a cheap brush. I got it in a, in a package from Michaels. It was like $3.99 or $4.99. And I'm just going to cover the entire surface. This will achieve two things. First, it's another protective coat after the Mod Podge, and also it'll bring the color down just a little bit, making it a little bit darker. Notice I'm placing the completed walls on wax paper. Wax paper is great because clear glue does not stick to wax paper. A number of my viewers were kind enough to point this out after viewing some of my older videos where I didn't know this yet. I actually discovered this by myself, but it would have been a lot easier if someone had told me this earlier. So yeah, use wax paper. Here we go with just a little bit of a tug. It comes off 
and the bottom is still a little bit wet so I'll clean that surface with uh, my finger and a paper towel and just set it on its side to dry for a little while. So here's my work area. I'm by the window and if you look closely there's this little bit of glue where the glue ran down and gathered at the bottom of the of the wall and you might say why not trim that up with a pair of scissors but we're not going to do that I'll show you why by leaving it there it makes the wall more stable and less prone to tipping over so we're just gonna leave it so I'm in my front yard and I've mounted the walls to this pizza box using some pins and I'm going to hit it with some Minwax clear satin spray polyurethane and this is our third and final protective layer make sure you don't skip this step because if you fail to seal that clear glue and it gets wet again like your players spill something on it the glue will reactivate all right let's check out some of the floor plans we can make if you watched the last episode of the caves of carnage the bandit layer this is what it looks like this is what it looks like up close you can see the bandit leaders suite of rooms and that's a lot of mileage out of just those few walls here's your typical square room a larger room with hallways T intersection four-way intersection and a whole chunk of dungeon including a staircase T intersection catacombs and a room filled with bandits that's a lot of versatility and if you look at them up close to me that looks just like professional looking terrain only it doesn't block the line of sight storage is simple look how much I can fit in that small box again the advantage of keeping it under 16 centimeters the walls are versatile. They could double as a low stone wall around a house if you play a skirmish game. Once you've made a few walls and you're comfortable, you can make variations. I used a styrofoam cutter and some spare heads to make this wall. These catacomb walls were made from some spare citadel skeletons I had lying around. So there you go. A couple of hours and pretty much no extra money and you got yourself some walls. So that's how I build dungeon walls. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. Questions, comments, put them below. Share this video so we can keep growing the channel and join us on our Facebook group. But wait, before you go, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can join the fastest growing D&D channel on YouTube. I'm not sure that's a fact, but we did gain 7,000 subscribers last month, so it sounds like a fact. It sounds factish. Factish. I'm going with that. But anyway, we have over 70 videos of content where I show you step by step how I design encounters and plan for a game of D&D. So if you're a dungeon Dungeon Master, you definitely want to watch those. This has been Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table. May all your rolls be 20s. If you enjoyed today's content, click the Dungeon Door logo to subscribe to the channel and the bell icon to receive notifications. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at DungeonCraft.